Hello everyone, my name is Brianna Monet and thank you for visiting my channel. Today is a special video because we are having story time. Now, the subject that I'm going to talk about today is a kind of touchy subject. That's why it took me so long to make this video. Um, you know, it's almost a year later and I'm just now having the courage to talk about what happened to me. So, as in the title, you see that we're going to be talking about how I almost lost my son when he was born. So, um, I got pregnant in July and I didn't find out that I was pregnant until August. And, you know, I went to the OBGYN, you know, was having regular appointments. And the first half of my pregnancy was really just normal. So, you know, I went for an appointment one day and she took some blood tests and she said that one of the blood tests um, came back high. Now, I don't know the name of the specific drug test or, you know, remember what it meant, but I just remember her saying that, you know, it's nothing really to worry about. We just have to keep an eye on it. So, you know, I was like, oh, okay. Later on in the pregnancy, I, I went back to the doctor and she said, you know, we're going to put you under some more supervision just to make sure that everything is okay. So I started going to the um, OBGYN, OBGYN twice a week just to monitor TJ's heart rate and to make sure that he was developing on time and making sure that everything was okay. And, you know, it seemed as though everything was okay. So it's getting closer to my due date and my pediatrician, not the pediatrician, my OBGYN said to me, you know, we're going to induce you just a little bit early, you know, because at a certain point, babies don't grow anymore. So it's no point of keeping him in there. So we're going to get him out a couple days early. So it's time for me to have TJ. I go to the hospital around 11, I get induced, and around eight in the morning, it's time for me to push. So, you know, I got my epidural, I'm ready, and we're pushing, we're pushing, we're pushing. Finally, TJ comes out, you know, I'm crying. Oh my God, I have a baby, all that jazz. But when she took TJ out and put him on my chest, he was real pale and kind of just limp. You know, I didn't take any notice to it. I'm out of it. But my mom says, why is TJ not crying? So then everybody's looking around like, why is TJ not crying? Right after that, they took him away. I got to hold TJ for two seconds and they rushed him away. You know, he was not breathing. And um, he wasn't getting oxygen for about 10 minutes. I mean, he was, he was breathing a little bit, but he was really having a hard time breathing for like 10 minutes. And if you, anybody knows anything about breathing, you can't be depleted of oxygen for 10 minutes. So, you know, a million things are racing through my head right now. Like, is my baby going to make it? Is he going to die? You know, at that point, I just, nobody was expecting this to happen. So we were all scared and all crying. And, you know, they didn't even bring him back. They put him in an incubator because at this point, you know, they were saying that there could be brain damage so they had to take him to the the NICU which is the um, intensive care unit the nursery intensive care unit so um, they didn't have the proper equipment that they needed at the hospital that I was at so like 30 minutes after my baby was born they had to transport him to a whole nother hospital my mom went and, you know, Tyler went. Tyler was sick, okay? Tyler was throwing up. We were all devastated because we didn't know 
what was going to happen to TJ. So, you know, they rushed him over to the next hospital and I was still at the, the, the regular hospital. So they rolled me off to a room. All I could think about was where is my baby? You know, I want to be with my baby, but of course, I just had a baby. I can't get up and walk out the hospital. So they made me stay for at least 24 hours before I could leave, which, you know, they weren't really supposed to let me go before then, but they understood and they let me go. And I went to um, the other hospital where TJ was being kept. So when I got to the other T, other TJ, when I got to the other hospital, it was real 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 hard for me because when someone is pregnant and having a baby you never think of seeing your baby hooked up to a whole bunch of tubes and monitors and screens and beeping noises it just broke my heart I literally broke down in the intensive care unit like I couldn't do it I couldn't take it my heart was hurting so bad because I couldn't believe that this happened to me like how could this happen to me how could this happen to my baby like out of all the babies in the world why mine I broke down and I had to step outside I was just crying and crying and crying and I'll um insert some some photos so you guys could see what I'm talking about like it's literally hard to look at these pictures just looking at this little tiny tiny person hooked up to all these big machines and monitors and it was awful so tj was in the nicu for two and a half weeks and um the doctors were basically saying that he was depleted of oxygen for 10 minutes which you know can cause brain damage so they had to do tests to see if he had brain damage and um, they ran scans and they said that they saw small hemorrhaging basically meaning you know a little bit of bleeding which they said could go two ways um, you know it can go away and it'll be all fine or you know he could have disabilities. So just to think about the child that you just imagined in your brain was gonna be so perfect and everything was just gonna be perfect. When someone tells you that your child is gonna be disabled, how do you deal with that? I didn't know how to deal with that. Tyler didn't know how to deal with that because we were not prepared at all for any of this. Okay, we didn't, we didn't expect that to happen. So having a doctor tell you that, you know, it's hard to, to deal with and to handle. So I was depressed, very depressed. I had the baby blues times 10. And, you know, I was crying every day, praying and asking God, why, why did this happen? So my OBGYN came to visit us while we were at the hospital and she said that there was an infection in my placenta and I got TJ sick and that's what caused all the complications. Well, we were trying to figure out how in the heck does a placenta get infected and how did we not know? Like, how, do you, how, how did we not know this? And I guess, you know, it, it must have happened close to the end of the pregnancy. You know, we're still trying to figure all those details out. But the fact of the matter is my placenta had an infection and it got my baby sick in the womb. And if he would have stayed in the womb any longer, if, he would, if we wouldn't have got induced, TJ may not have made it. And that's just the truth of the matter. He may have not made it. But he did make it, and he was on antibiotics for two and a half weeks, and we took him home after that. And, you know, therapists came to the house to see how he was doing. He had a little time, you know, a little, had a hard time eating and latching on um, while trying to breastfeed, but we just monitored his development after that. For the most part, everything 
looked fine. But, you know, it wasn't over because I had guilt on my heart and Tyler, you know, couldn't really express to me how he was feeling because he was trying to make sure that I was okay. But later on down the line, I found out that, you know, Tyler thought that maybe it was how I was eating or maybe what I was drinking. So that caused a lot of tension in our relationship. It was really just the devil just tried to attack my whole family. But God is good. And me and Tyler are still together. We got past it. So, you know, that's all said and done. So... You know, as time is going on, we're watching TJ and making sure that everything is okay. And all the doctors were saying, you know, this baby looks good. You know, if you were to just show me a picture of this baby, I wouldn't be able to tell that he was in the NICU for two weeks because he was looking awesome. He was meeting all of his milestones, you know, drinking fine, rolling over, doing all the normal things that normal babies do. So now, it is a year later, TJ just had his first birthday, and my son is perfect, y'all. When I tell you, my son is perfect, he is walking, he is making noises, he is eating real people food, my son is good. And that is why God is good, because who knows what could have happened, you know? I'm just grateful that he got me through that time because I was really struggling, y'all. The struggle was real. I wanted to share this story just because I know there's other women out there who went through the same thing or are going through the same thing. My word of advice to you is you have to pray and you have to believe okay and you need to have people who support you around you you know no negativity none of that stuff you just need to be nurtured at that time because that you know that could easily break a person but god would never put you through anything that you couldn't handle and i can 100 percent say that that experience that i went through made me a better person made me a better woman made me a better mom so I'm grateful that I went through that because I learned a lot. Thank you guys so much for supporting me and giving me your kind words. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.